Good afternoon and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today, I am going to make some cheese. I'm feeling quite ambitious about this project. I think I'm gonna make two different kinds of cheese. So if it gets confusing, please ask me any questions you might have. It shouldn't get confusing because these are two very simple processes and I will explain the differences between the two. Okay, you always wanna start with a stainless steel pot with a heavy bottom, one that won't heat up too fast on you and because you're going to want to keep your milk stirred while you're heating up your milk. Another tool that you always need when you're making cheese is a colander or cheesecloth or both depending on how big your curds are you can sometimes get away with just the colander and that works just fine. A slotted spoon now everything that you use that comes in contact with the cheese has to be non-reactive. So plastic or stainless steel is your safest bet. A knife for cutting the curd and a slotted spoon for scooping the curd out when you're done. Then for the two different recipes, there are some ingredients that you need for both and some that you only need for one of them. So for making simple farmer's cheese, all you need is an acid. So your acid can be the juice of a lemon, a quarter cup of vinegar, or a two, two and a quarter teaspoons of citric acid. This is for one gallon. So that is the approximate amount. When you're making farmer's cheese, you're going to add your acid and see if the curds start to develop and if they don't you're going to add a little bit more acid and salt if you prefer uh, not everybody uses salt then the only other ingredient that you need is for the other cheese the other cheese i'm making is mozzarella my favorite and my family's favorite and the only other ingredient that that requires is rennet so we have a liquid rennet that we like to use. We prefer the liquid. This is a different brand than I normally have, but I keep this in the refrigerator at all times. And this is something that you might be able to find in your grocery store in the jello and pudding section. This is something that I used years ago when I first started making cheese and I couldn't find rennet available locally. I bought this and it works just fine. Just follow the directions in here, which I've lost. Um, I haven't used it in forever. I prefer the way the cheese sets with this actual um, liquid rennet. So those are your options for two different kinds of cheese, mozzarella or farmer's cheese. And of course, how can I forget a digital thermometer is a great addition as well. Or if you have, let me look in these drawers. No, I have one in here. A uh, candy thermometer. That's another good tool to use to keep track of the temperature. But like my mama always said, you don't need no thermometer to make cheese. Well, she doesn't say it like that, but she does kind of laugh when I talk about using thermometers in my cheese making because she does it all just by look and touch and feel. And she's right because the temperature is not going to be that high. For the mozzarella, we only want to get it up to 88 degrees at first. And then for the simple farmer's cheese, we're gonna, we don't want to go above 105 because we want raw cheese. This recipe is for raw for raw milk but you don't have to do it raw this is just our preferred way and um but the temperature would still be the same okay something that's important to note is that this recipe can be done with any kind of milk as long as it's not ultra pasteurized it doesn't matter if it's raw or goat or cow or camel any kind of milk any kind of dairy will do so Something that I would recommend doing is if you're using raw milk to vigorously shake your jar um, beforehand so that the cream that's separated out onto the surface will get stirred back in. But 
I'm doing what people say you can't do with goat milk. Everybody says that cow milk separates easily, but goat milk doesn't. But if you have Nubians like mine with extra creamy goodness, you will notice that the cream definitely rises to the top. Did you see that clump just slide out? That is not spoiled milk, friends. That is cream. Don't worry, my hands are clean. And this is just gonna be used for my family anyway, but I scrub my hands. Always, always scrub your hands before you do anything in the kitchen. That's a rule I hope I don't have to tell any of you guys. <laughs> so anyway, shake that cream layer in. And I'm gonna do a gallon in each pan because I'm gonna do two different cheese recipes. I hope it doesn't confuse you guys. You're gonna love it. And you're probably wondering, well, if you take all the cream out, isn't that gonna make the cheese not so great? Well, that is the nice thing about how goat milk doesn't separate as easily as cow, is there's still a ton of cream left behind in this milk. First off, the method I'm using is very primitive where I'm just pouring off a clump of cream. So a lot of cream stays behind, even that's separated. And um, secondly, there's so much cream in the rest of the milk that it, it, you really do not notice a difference with the cheese. I promise you. All right, then I'm gonna take this jar of cream and I'm gonna put it in the coldest spot in my fridge and let it get nice and cold so then I can make it into butter. Yes, goat butter, it is possible, even without a cream separator. It seems a little rushed, it's because I am. Liam's down for a nap and this is all the time I have to make this cheese. The front pot, the taller pot, I am gonna use for my mozzarella. The back pot, I'm gonna use for my farmer's cheese. Mozzarella has the acid added at the beginning. The farmer's cheese has the acid added after it's come up to temperature. So I'm gonna use citric acid because that's what I prefer to use. Um, I don't have any reason why I prefer to use it, I just do. So I'm gonna mix my two and a quarter teaspoons of citric acid into some water, just a little bit of water to dissolve it and pour it in and add it in. And then I'm gonna turn on both burners to medium. I want to bring the temperature up on both of them, keeping track as I go with my thermometer. And I, when I get to 88 degrees on the mozzarella, I can take it off the heat and add my rennet. And when I add my rennet, I'm gonna let that set for 10 minutes. With the farmer's cheese, when I get it up to 105 degrees, I'm gonna add the acid then. And then when I see it curdle, make sure I've added enough acid to see it curdle, then I turn off the heat and I let it set. And that is the first stage to get a curd on my cheese. All right, got my citric acid dissolved and I add that. And I like to use my plastic coated whisk to keep things just right. And then I turn everything on medium. You do medium because you don't want it to get too hot too fast. And yet if you have it on low, it'll you'll be here all day waiting for it to get to the right temperature. So I'm just gonna sit back and relax and let the temperature come up on this milk. And I've got my thermometer in here. I am gonna stir it frequently to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pan, which at this temperature it usually doesn't. Other cheeses that you get up to a higher temperature can have that problem, but this one's pretty easy. Okay, if you're following around along for the mozzarella, you're gonna wanna, while you're letting that heat up, get your rennet ready and that is going to be a quarter teaspoon of liquid rennet or an eighth of a tablet if you're using the tablet junket. And I'm using the liquid, so I stir that into about a quarter cup of water. And then if you're following along for the farmer's cheese, you're gonna wanna get your citrus or citric, your acid, that's it, <laughs> your acid ready. So I've got my citric acid 
mixed up with water and dissolved and I'm ready to add either one of those when the temperature comes correct. And as you see, the milk really doesn't do much. You're not gonna see it boil or bubble or anything like that. You might see a little bit of steam coming off or a little bit of a skin forming over the top and that's about as high of a temperature as you're gonna bring it to. Okay, so because I was using a shallower pan for this recipe because the temperature was a higher temperature it's almost at the same temperature so we've got 88 degrees now on the mozzarella and for those of you that are getting confused or want to stay separated and you want to make mozzarella i actually already have a mozzarella video it's just um i put it out when i didn't have a whole lot of subscribers and there we go we have reached 105 degrees on that one so we're going to be doing both steps at the same exact time so the rennet you add and you stir in just for a little while you don't want to over stir it and that's it you let that curdle for 10 minutes to half an hour depending on your house and your situation I've seen go both ways so I check it at 10 minutes um all right turn this beeper off eh. let me remove this pan from the burner because the burner's gonna stay hot for a little while and I don't want it to be too hot all right and then the easy one this is so easy, you guys. Farmer's cheese. Heat your milk. Add your citric acid. Now, if I don't see curdling, then I need to add a little bit more acid. I'm watching for separation. Oh, I'm seeing it on my whisk I don't see let me add a little bit of citric acid I don't like not seeing more curdling than this mixed up a little bit more citric acid and water just add a tiny bit at a time if you don't have curdling after your first addition of your acid base then adding a little bit more at a time as you go and I am seeing, you know, a little bit of curdling on the spatula. Oh, there we go. Now I'm seeing it. All right. So it's not a lot of curdling that you're looking for. It's just a little bit. So you know you've got enough acid added. And that is good. I'm gonna let that sit undisturbed and let the curd sit when it is completely set and the curds and whey are separating you will look for a clean break which means when you press your knife or spoon into it it makes a break like it's already set into curds with the farmers cheese I'm just gonna let it curdle a little bit longer probably in you know a good 10 minutes to allow the curds to separate from the whey and then I'm done. I just have to line my colander with cheesecloth and pour it through. This is um, actually working out very easy for me. It may not look like it's easy or but it's, it is to do two different kinds like this because they're kind of complementing each other. So now my farmer's cheese is ready to be poured through the cheesecloth. Don't let the cheesecloth go in the bowl, which it's trying to do. And while I'm doing this, my curds are being formed with the rennet in the mozzarella cheese. So it's like the perfect time frames are lining up with these two cheeses being made at the same time. So if you're somebody who has a lot of different a lot of milk to use and you want to make a couple of different cheeses at a time I highly recommend doing mozzarella and farmer's cheese at the same time 
You see all those curds now? Oh yeah. Beautiful, aren't they? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now the bowl underneath my colander that's catching all this whey is full of whey. So my cheese curds aren't able to separate. So I'm going to empty the bowl back into the pan so that I can use that whey for other things. There's a bunch of different ways to use whey. Mainly we use them for our animals. They love the whey. Right, I'm just gonna set this aside and let it strain. It's straining really slow because this is a actually buttered muslin instead of cheesecloth and it, it is a finer weave which is nice because I get to retain a lot more of the curds this way but it does take a little longer to, for it to drain so I'm going to set it aside and we're going to test our mozzarella and see if it's got a clean break yet it should all right the first thing I look for is the edge see where it's gelled up that's a nice sign that the clean break is formed and then a cut I can't show you here a cut in will reveal how perfectly separated that curd and whey is you see how the whey floated up on the top so our next step is to cut our curds and you're gonna cut those curds like a checkerboard pattern, approximately one inch squares. So we go one way and then the other way. And then we're going to bring our temperature back up to 105 and cook these curves a little bit so that they firm up and tighten up. So that they can become a nice squeaky curd for making great mozzarella cheese. So I grew impatient and I'm making gravity help me with my farmer's cheese. Just tie the corners into knots and put a string on it and tie it to your cabinet door. That's all we do. Meanwhile, we are bringing the temperature up on our curds and whey that are gonna become mozzarella. I don't think that my curds and whey separated as much as they normally do because usually the whey is much more clear. So, but it, it should turn out just fine, hopefully still. I'll let you know if it doesn't. But we just wanna tighten those curds so we're not breaking them up, we're just heating them up. And we'll heat them up until we start to see some tightening up, which could be, 10 minutes and I've seen some people say half an hour so it really is just a feel thing so just when you're starting to notice that those curds are tight and hard that's when you can take them off the heat and begin the next step so the next all right we are at temperature turn that off while I talk so the next step that we are going to do is we are going to ladle our curds into the colander and I'm just using a reg regular colander because these curds should be tight by the time I put them in there they won't be little like the farmer's cheese was and then you have to heat process it so some people do that by putting the curds back into boiling water or you know various other methods I use the easy way I microwave it for 30 seconds at a time my microwave um, apparently runs a little hot, so I did it for a minute the first time and I ruined it. And so the cheese should just start to get soft when you microwave it. You don't want it to start separating and getting gritty. That means you've heated it too far. So just heat it a little bit at a time and I'll show you that process. For those of you making the farmer's cheese, you're done. You're just gonna strain out as much or as little of that way as you want to however thick you want your cheese or how thin you want it you can leave a lot of whey in there if you want it to be spreadable like for a cracker and then if you do choose to do it that way um, something I like to do is add a bunch of herbs and salt and stuff to it and that makes a nice cracker spread 
or you can let it strain longer. I mean, you can go eight to 12 hours even of straining and get a nice hard dry cheese that's really yummy used in cooking or just snacking. But um, if you did want to add salt to this recipe, you can add it at this point and stir it into the curds, or you could have added it when you first put the milk in the pan. Um, I forgot to mention that because I don't really tend to use that much salt. Or um, when it's done, if you're gonna make it into a crumbled cheese, you can crumble it into the cheese. Like crumble the cheese and sprinkle it with salt and crumble it and mix it with your hands or whatever, or spoon. And then with the mozzarella, I add the salt. I do add salt to my mozzarella, I do like that. I add that when I'm doing the microwave step. So at the very end, when I know I'm going to just microwave it for one more 30 seconds, that's when I sprinkle it with some salt. And you can use cheese salt or pink Himalayan salt or any kind of salt you want to. I do recommend a finer salt. It just mixes in easier. All right, y'all. <laughs> I apologize. For those of you wanting to make the mozzarella cheese, go to my tutorial playlist and find it. It's there, or just search my page for homemade mozzarella cheese. I'll leave a link to that video as well. Because while I was talking to you guys on the video, and I said, let me turn this off, because it's beeping, and then I kept talking, I had the heater on that whole time, and I just burnt up my cheese and ruined my mozzarella. That happens. This is why you really have to pay attention when you're making cheese. And this is why I do it when the kids are napping. Oh, but it's not completely ruined, I'm sure. I'm gonna try to salvage it. I'm gonna strain this curd and try to do the last step and see how it works. But basically I overheated it and it got melty and separated. Oopsie. It'll still be a good cheese. It might even end up being just like mozzarella because hey, maybe that was the heat treatment it needed, right? But um, if I succeed or fail, I still have cheese. It's just a different kind of cheese. That is one of the things I love about making homemade cheese is it, even if you mess up a step or miss a step or whatever, you're still gonna end up with something yummy. <laughs> All right guys, let's see if I can salvage this. All right, so I poured off most of the whey and I'm pressing it all the curds together and it's actually starting to feel like mozzarella I think I may have just heat treated it in a different step than I normally do not the way I would recommend doing it <laughs> not sure how consistent <laughs> these results would be <laughs> But hey, look at that, it's starting to form up into mozzarella. It's not as much as normal. I'm thinking that um, I either didn't let my curds curdle because I was in a hurry. So when I cut my curds, I might have been doing it just a few minutes sooner than I should have. Yeah, this is turning into mozzarella. This is what mozzarella looks like. And this is exactly how you do it when you microwave it. You microwave it for 30 seconds and then you knead it and you squeeze out the way and as you do that it becomes shinier. You see how it's getting shinier and stretchy looking? That's now if it's too hot to touch. Oh yeah, look at that. Y'all, I just made mozzarella by accident. Not following the steps appropriately, but so with mozzarella. It's good to stretch the cheese. So you stretch it and you just stretch it and stretch it. Oh yeah, we still got mozzarella y'all. This is the stage that I should be salting it at. I, sorry about the banging. My pink Himalayan salt tends to clump. I don't want to put the whole container in there. Got it salted and stretching. Y'all, I can't believe that this actually worked. I mean, I can, I guess, but. <laughs> All right, so if you want mozzarella in the shape of a ball, you gotta shape it into a ball now. If you want string cheese, 
you know, the cheese that your kids love so much, stretch it out like this and drop it into ice water. That is the perfect snack. The kids love it. But I'm just going to give it a couple more pulls, get it a little bit more stringy and stretchy. I don't want to dry it out too much. Um, and then I'm going to form it into a ball, one ball. And that's about how much uh, mozzarella I get from one gallon usually. So maybe my curdling was okay. I don't know. It's been a little while since I made cheese. But, um, you know, a couple of months. So I usually, when I'm making cheese, I like make it like every day. So there you go. Mozzarella cheese. You can make a salt brine to set this in if you want to. Ours never lasts that long. So we just eat it usually the day we make it. <laughs> Especially the mozzarella usually is gone. And the from, not, not fromage. Um, farmer's cheese will probably be the cheese that lasts us throughout the week. And it is good to use it up within a week. Fresh cheese needs to be used up usually in about a week. Sometimes it can go longer, but we don't ever know if it can go longer because we always eat it. And all of this whey, with it being so white in color instead of clear or yellow, I am at a prime opportunity right now to make ricotta, but not tonight. I'm gonna put it all, all the way into this big pot and I'm gonna put it in my spare fridge. And tomorrow I will show you how to make ricotta. All right, so there you have it. How to make easy farmer's cheese. I had to stop recording earlier, so it's a lot more drained out. And I'm gonna probably refrigerate it soon. I'm gonna save all this way. And you saw I accidentally made mozzarella cheese, but I do have a mozzarella cheese tutorial video. You can check that out. I will leave a link down in the description and possibly on an iCard if I can figure out how to work those. And that's it. That's how you make cheese, y'all. It's not hard. It's super easy, and it's so much better than store-bought. It's delicious. And remember, you don't have to have your own goat milk in your backyard to do this. You can use any kind of milk as long as it's not ultra pasteurized. So please enjoy your cheese. Like and share. Subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.